Hello, tulips. Hello, hello. Welcome. It's Wednesday. That means it's live from Portland, Oregon. It's Flower School. Sorry, had a little SNL moment there. Welcome. We're so glad you've joined us. If you hear lots of laughter and raucous sound, we are in class today. Teacher Carolyn's out there. I'm Teacher Michelle. And in the studio with me, I have Leanne. She's going to be with you on Facebook and YouTube. She's going to pop around. Ricky is with us running tech and making sure everything goes as smoothly as it will with me involved. And then we also have Hitomi, and she is on YouTube today, I believe. Yes. And then out there in Cyberland, we have Susie and Caledonia giving you assistance as well. So if you are watching us on your phone and you want to see us larger, turn your phone sideways into portrait mode or a landscape mode. If you are a first time visitor to live today, please type in there, hi, I'm a first timer. If you're a tulip, that means you're a current student, a past student, or a member of the Flower Lovers Club, put your little tulip icon in there so we know that you're with us today. We are talking fall. We have reached that fabulous, sometimes narrow, in the Pacific Northwest this year, it's a narrow window of fall, uh, where we just have so many beautiful flowers from summer hitting their last flush and we're starting to see the leaves turn because we're getting a little chilly. In Portland, we went from 85 degrees to 35 degrees in two days a while back. So we are really seeing the last of our dahlias. We're seeing the last of some of the garden type flowers. Um, some of our fall babies are coming in, so that's fun to see. There is nary a pumpkin in sight today, though. Lots of fall colors, but no pumpkins, so we're giving those a rest for a little bit. Uh, my first piece that I'm doing today is going to be a vertical. It's in one of these lovely containers from Leanne's Secret Stash in the hallway, um, and I'm going foam free. So it is full of water, and I have floral netting in here. Michelle, there's no tape, you say. No, there isn't, because this is wedged in here. And if this comes out, I have bigger issues than whether there was tape involved. So, as I pull a few materials, has anybody chimed in to say hello yet? You know, it's crazy busy over here on Facebook today, and I haven't even kept up, but Lori said that their leaves are actually gone already. Wow. Ours are so late this year and turning. Yeah. And we have, in fact, you knew they did the first leaf pickup today in one of the neighborhoods, but there were no leaves no, no, to pick up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have a feeling we're going to go right to frozen. Oh my gosh. Can you see these? Are these just not the most beautiful, beautiful Ilex berries? They are. They're orange, but they are a little on the pale side, except for where you get up to the very end and then they just get dark, dark, dark. I don't know how well that reads on camera, but in person, these are just glorious. And of course, as I move them around, they send their little seeds all over the place. Sorry, Tommy. <laughs> like I said, it's always like a gamble when I'm involved. So today, the gamble is mess. Drake said they have a blizzard in Salt Lake today. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And That's... I know Tahoe was having snow today. Snow oh, has sent, hit the world. Goodness. Well, I'm not ready for snow yet. I, uh, I like the shoulder seasons. I like spring and um, fall. I won't say best, but more. How's that? Um, I just like that transition from point A to point B. Woo, this is a stem and a half down here. All right, here's my cut. I'm wearing some, taking it home with me apparently. And I'm gonna wedge him down in here. I saw I had a gooby on here. I don't want it to the front. All right, so fall. This is when Everybody gets super excited about that. Well, I did a really good job with my chicken wire. I can't even get the stick in there. That's stable. Those stems are so big. Yeah, and I thought I picked the skinny guy, but maybe I didn't get the sk as skinny a guy as I thought I got. All right, get him tucked down in there. 
Amy said there's snow on Highway 6 coming in from Tillamook to Portland right now, and I know Mount Hood's been getting snow too. Oh my goodness. All right, I'm not ready for snow yet, people. <laughs> not ready mentally or physically ready for snow. However, this is some people's favorite time of year, pumpkin spice time. I'm not a pumpkin spice person. Are you? Are you team pumpkin spice? Yay or nay? Because we had a lively debate about it in the classroom today. Um, if you're not a pumpkin spice person, say nay. If you are all pumpkin spice all the time, like pumpkin flavored everything, let me know. And what's your favorite pumpkin thing? I can do one slice of pumpkin pie at Thanksgiving and I'm done. Leanne. They want to know those berries. It's not bittersweet. So, and the tulips have been saying in, no, it's not bittersweet, but what is that berry? So this is Ilex berry, I-L-E-X. And the foliage has mostly expired. There are a few little bits of leaves on here. And then some of the others I've been picking off um, as I see them. So it really is just the stem with the berries on. Um, and then I'm adding in these beautiful, beautiful, let's get a close up of these because I absolutely adore celosia. And this is the coxcomb celosia, or um, as I lovingly call it, brains, because that's what it looks like, is little fuzzy brains. And I know we're past Halloween, but still, you just can't sometimes. So I want to tuck a few of these in here, nice and low. Or as low as my floral netting is going to let me go today. I thought he was being really efficient. He might be a little short. We'll save him. Their heads are so darn heavy that they just topple over. So do we have team, anybody saying they're a team pumpkin spice or a no? Not Yay. so much on YouTube. Not, not a pumpkin no. spice. Okay, YouTube, you're my people. <laughs> I would say on Facebook, everybody's a nay except for one. Really? Okay, I'm, I'm a little surprised by that. Even. Yeah. Huh. Well, the classroom was 50-50, and there, uh, I was not the deciding vote, actually. So there you have it. So this fun little goodie here is, I'm not going to tell you, does anybody know what this is? If you do, type it in. I'm going to tuck a few of them in here. They have wonderful stems, kind of a yellow gold stem, and kind of a dusty finish to the, um, the Berries, they're not really a berry, it's a fruit. It grows in the desert. If you like um, shade in the desert, or in Hawaii or California, you might sit under one of these. Anybody brave and venturing a guess? We've got from a cool thingamabob to grapes and guava, but um, both Kathy and Renee got it right with date palm. Date palm, exactly. These are date palm, like palm tree. Oh, this Alex and I are going to have a chat. Are date palm fronds, uh, or, or not really the fronds, but it's the um, the stem that the dates develop on. So these are obviously never going to turn into fully delicious edible dates, but this comes out of the center of the palm tree and they hang down and then um, as they ripen and grow, um, they'll get to be, oh, that would be big. But they just have such a cool texture. I loved how it coordinated with the container, just gave it some interesting draping movement, which I thought was really cool. I'm going to turn, you know, where's that turntable? We were talking about that turntable. So the question that's coming up are the berries and the dates, how will they hold? 
the berries and the date. So the berries are going to hold really quite well. Actually, both of them are going to hold quite well. Um, all the usual things you would tell your customer. Don't, don't put them in a heat source. Um, the berries likely will start to dehydrate before they fall off. Now, if you manhandle this, you're going to pop some off, but they're not as fragile as you might think. Um, and the date palms are actually pretty sturdy. Um, they're, I would say with both of them, you're going to get at least a week and a half before they start to look maybe not so great. I won't say bad, but maybe just not so great. And then I want to tuck in a few roses, not that one, but definitely that one. And these are called Coffee Break. And they have just a lovely um, kind of a golden bronze center to them. So if you can kind of see into the center there, they just open up so prettily. Their leaves curl back and their, or excuse me, their petals curl back. The sepals drop down, so you really get this nice, full, open rose. Um, just, this has like been my fall favorite this year. Of course, uh, this is kind of my palette also, so there's that. But I want to tuck a few of those down in here. Give me a little more, a little more support in there. Tuck them nice and low. So who do we have with us today? Do we have any, are, are our tulips checking in and saying hi? Yeah, we have Robin, Linda, Colleen, Harvey, Tess, and Elaine on YouTube. Oh, very good. Tess, hi, nice to see you. I'm a, I haven't been on the other side of the, the camera with you for a while. Facebook has been crazy busy. We've got Drake, Jim, Harmony, Nikki, Margaret, Lori, Monica, Pamela, Joe, Maria, Trisha, Sweetbriar, Cher, Kim, Gina, Cindy, Renee, Rosie, Tammy, Amy, Kathleen, Kathy, Roxy, Alfonso, Monica, and Joanne. And there's many more, I'm oh, sure. <laughs> and just um, some people are loving the fact that we do great designs, and some think that the conversation gets to be too much, and I'm like, well, that's what we do. We are a collaboration and conversation on these hours. Absolutely. You know, that's how we learn things, is we ask questions, and we talk about the different products and materials. All right, so I have a trio of those roses tucked in there. I might tuck one more into the back, just for a little bit of depth so as you look through the design on the side you don't really see the whole rose but you get the hint of the rose so your brain says oh it must be a rose back there and in fact in this case there is one tucked down nice and low and then we have some lovely bronze vertical amaranthus so quite often you might be used to seeing the trailing or the hanging amaranthus where this is drooping down. These are lovely vertical, so they've got some really nice spiky texture. Now having said that, I grabbed one that's got a little bit of a little bit of a bend to him, but it does mimic the line of my date palms. I love going to um, the Palm Springs area, uh, southern Arizona area, where they have the date palm farms. Has anybody ever had a date shake before? Oh my gosh, a thousand calories a sip, but oh, so worth it. My goodness. Leanne, what's happening? Well, Harvey had a question. Okay. And he wanted to know if possibly learning techniques from flower school would be able to make him more prosperous and successful in his career. So does what we teach or what you could learn at flower school, will that make you more successful? Correct. Yes. So, um, yes, what we teach at flower school are best practices within the industry. We give you a thorough knowledge or we present a thorough uh, treatment of the elements and principles of design and design theory. So a lot of people know 
how to do something, but they don't necessarily know why they're doing it. Um, so sometimes the why can make things a lot better. And knowing the proper techniques for things, proper care and handling, proper um, mechanics, if nothing else, uh, absolutely. Does it translate into more money or will it guarantee you success? No, you have to put the work in, but we definitely set you up for success. We give you the tools and the training, and then it's up to you to practice your craft. You have to start to implement the elements and principles, good mechanics, sound pricing practices. The students have been working on pricing all day today. Let me tell you, they are brain fried, and that's why the laughter, because just about anything makes them break up laughing because they have just, they are done for the day. <clears throat> so I added a little bit of that amaranthus in, and I feel like I feel like I need just a little, a little something else. I'm not sure. <laughs> I keep doing that. <laughs> uh, I love that on camera. The berries and the dates just look amazing, and they go so well with the roses. Oh, good. I'm kind of feeling like the chili peppers could be an interesting interesting texture in here. I'm going to separate these stems a little bit. So these are, I believe these are ornamental chilies, correct Leanne? They're not edible chilies? That is correct. Okay. So so no dining while you're designing. Yeah. Wouldn't happen likely anyhow. I do like it spicy, but I'm not sure I want to, um, I want to embrace that quite, quite yet. So their stems are a little tougher than I thought they were going to be. Oh, he's going to be too short. Well, by the time I get done butchering it, we're not going to have anything to work with, are we, Michelle? All right, there we go. Get a little tucked. Oh, okay, I did that. I'm good with that. Rosie pointed out that in the online program, there were modules on being a profitable florist. Yes. we. It, excellent. Thank you for bringing that up, Rosie. Um, in the classroom and online, we have segments on profitability and covering different pricing techniques. Uh, the ones the students are working on today is designing to a price point. So customer focused designing and pricing, making sure that um, we are conscientious of the customer's budget, but that we're also profitable. And um, they've just been running the math, creating a formula and a recipe, building it, and then reviewing. What could I do to make this more profitable? What could I do to um, change this around so it has a higher perceived value? So lots of good discussion out there today. So as I look at this, I would like to have something over here to offset the, the balance um, to balance out rather, to offset my date palm and my amaranthus. I'd like a little something. And I'm leaning towards a couple little fatsia just to, just to give me almost like a little shelf, maybe terrace them off to the side. This guy's got a nice, a nice stem here that might help me with that. So we'll take a look at him. I don't really want it to be too heavy, but I just feel that um, with the addition of the chili peppers, I introduced green, and I didn't have a plan to put foliage in here necessarily, but with the introduction of the green, I felt like I needed to give him a playmate. I needed to have something to um, offset that color or match up with that color visually so it feels a little more visually balanced. Physically, it's not tipping over again. Earl, the delivery driver, if he knocks this over, we have bigger issues at play. But, um, yeah. So over here on Facebook, Jackie has watched us many a time, but this is her first time catching live. Hey, tell me, what do you have over there on YouTube? We have some international um, guests timing in. Hannah from England, Bing from the Philippines. It's really cool to see them. Well, excellent. Well, Hannah and Bing and who was with us on Facebook, Leah? Jackie. Jackie, first timer, welcome. If you're on Facebook, I almost said if you're FaceTiming. If you're FaceTiming, stop it and pay attention. If you're on Facebook, we should give Jackie a welcome so that she feels uh, 
happy to be here with us. So I am, I am done with this one. Lots of texture, lots of tight and compact. Ricky's gonna love it when she has to take pictures of it Tom. <laughs> so I'm gonna move this out of the way for the moment. And grab a different container. So this one is a foam design. I've already put, placed my soaked foam. There's some water in it. I did not fill the water up because as I place the stems into the foam, it's going to displace water. Then I really didn't want it overflowing. Plus, I have left some spaces around the foam, specifically right here. There's a fairly large one. I don't know if you can see that by my thumb that gives me a place to add water. You never really want to fully pack it with foam because it does make it hard to add water down the road. So this one, hopefully, will be the opposite of that. That one was very linear and vertical and very compact at the binding point, that focal area. This one is going to be a little wilder, a little more freeform. At least that's the plan. So fall, Right, fall season. What's something else that happens a lot in the fall? Anybody have a thought? Rain. <laughs> Rain does happen a lot in the Pacific Northwest in the fall. I'm thinking it's football, right? We see a lot of football. At least at my house, we see a lot of football. We watch a lot, we go to a lot. So are you a football house? Do you guys like to watch football? Do you watch it to tolerate a spouse or significant other? Could you care less? So yay or nay to football. Give me a yay or a nay in there. And while you're typing those in, I'm going to play with this, which is bittersweet. And Hitomi and I pulled most of the leaves off. They were starting to dry out, so they weren't looking as fluffy and fabulous as we would have liked. So we just decided we'd get rid of them. That would make it easy. So I'm breaking some of these leaves, or branches rather, down. And I want to give myself some height in the design. Oh, he's probably not gonna stay at the moment. No, oh, he's not going to. Got a little excited there. Give myself a little bit of height. Sorry, Ricky, more fun things to take pictures of tomorrow. <laughs> and it's a fairly pliable material, so I might work with some of my pieces swirled around. For now, it might be kind of wild and pokey outy, it's a technical term, but I could bring it in maybe around this branch and tack it over here. Oh, he's going to bend and it. Dang it. Well, for now, I'm going to work with him double-ended and then just work him into the foam there. Maybe we can disguise that bend a little bit. Shh, don't tell. All right, so he needs a little help. So what I'm doing is looking for some materials that will give me some framing in my design. Oh, that's a fun one. And with framing, I'm just giving it, like you would say, a picture frame, a little closure on each side. Oh, there's a fun one. Just a way to add a little more movement into the piece and maybe a little more crazy, which would probably be crazier. Oh, he's just too fun. We'll have to play with him a little bit. So a wired wood pick would be fabulous. And I spy with my little eye one right there. So that's perfect. Shorten him down. <clears throat> so do we have any football fans with us today or is everybody no over it? Not so much on YouTube, only a couple of yays. Oh, all right. Which I'm almost 50-50. If okay. I counted right, I have 10 yays, and many people have season tickets, Very and good. 11 no's. Okay. And then Drake says, oh, she's talking sports again. Oh, Drake. <laughs> Drake, you are a cheerleader, so even though you didn't like sports, you participated. So you can't, you can't give me too much 
grief about sports and football. Ooh, and Sweet Briar has an entire stone wall full of bittersweet. <gasps> oh, jealous! jealous. <laughs> we'll be right down to pick some of that up. All right, I think on this last one, get him tucked in here, like so. And now that I've made a complete mess with all the bittersweet, we're just going to slide it off to the side. Cool. Don't want to make a terrible scraping sound. Now, the bittersweet is actually messier than the um, Ilex berry. It seems to be shedding quite dramatically as, as I work with it. Um, so this has got a little more freeform movement to it, a little wilder. And I have some wonderful end of the season dahlias over here. And I also have some wonderful end of the season hydrangeas. And I'm going to use these to base the design and cover my mechanics. So instead of filling this up with foliage, I'm going to use the hydrangea as a way to conceal that foam. Um, I noticed we're seeing a lot lately where people are not using any foliage in their designs, or very, very little, and the foliage that's being used is very specific and very intentional, not just, oh, fill it up with greens and then poke some flowers in, which I have to laugh. We talk about this in flower school, that things are seasonal. Designs are seasonal. Flowers are seasonal, right? But also what we choose to create has a lifespan and it rotates, right? So what, four or five years ago, everything was foliage. Flowers weren't as popular, but everything had foliage in it. Well, fast forward, we're all kind of greened out. We're kind of foliaged out. So they're saying, well, I don't want foliage in my designs. I just want flowers in my designs. Okay. That feels very, I don't know, when was that land? 19, hmm, mid-90s when Martha Stewart was at the Heights and we saw all of her round arrangements with nary a piece of foliage in sight. The Martha Wad. The Martha Wad, that's it. Just nothing but roses and peonies, um, but no foliage. And as a floral designer in the Northwest, you get kind of bummed out because we have such amazing foliage all the time. It's like, oh, but don't you want some of this? No, just flowers. Yes. A little bit of Karen handling questions coming uh -huh. in. I'm going to consolidate. Okay. One, would hairspray help the bittersweet berry stay on? Okay. Two, would you use alum on your hydrangea? Okay. And Three, would you add water later to this arrangement? Okay, so I'm going to go in reverse order. Yes, I will add water. I left that big gap to do so, and I'll do it at the end when I know I'm done sticking stems in there. Um, alum on the hydrangeas. 99% of the time I say yes. We are at the end of the season right now, and if you look at these up close, you'll see that they're very leathery in their texture. Um, and they're not, and I'm patting them, and I'm sure if Janet's on here, she's having apoplexy right now. Um, they are much sturdier than earlier in the season, so the alum really isn't going to do much. They've already started to harden off, and in fact, if I just left this stem in the water, did nothing to it, and let the water evaporate out and let the flower drink it up, this hydrangea will dry just exactly how it is. This is not airbrushed, this has not been retouched, this is Mother Nature's doing with the violet on top of that um, soft green, and it's fabulous. So normally I would say yes, dip that cut stem into alum. Uh, at this point, it's not going to gain me anything. And then the last question, or the first question rather, was about um, hairspray on the bittersweet. I don't know. Uh, it might help with the little coverings over the, um, the berries to keep them from popping off, 
but I have a feeling that you would have to put so much hairspray on there that it wouldn't be cost effective, like you or time effective. I don't think just a quick like you do on your hair at home would cut it. I think you'd really have to get in there and saturate it. Um, part of it's just nature of the beast with the materials, unfortunately. Yeah, man. More stuff. So okay. Renee said she had a Martha bouquet in 2001. And then Janet said, Martha's from Nutley, New Jersey, just like her. Yes. Hi, Janet. <laughs> and then question from Cindy. Okay. Do you see the best for styling going out of style soon, or do you think it's going to be here for a while yet? Okay. So if by best bow you're referring to... The best bow encompasses a pretty broad spectrum of design in my mind. Um, if you're talking about the crazy free form, um, almost uncontrolled look, yes, I think we have it has run its course. If you're talking about a slightly more refined bohemian approach, if you can put those two words together. Um, no, I think what we're starting to see is, you know, bespoke or best bow. It's a it's custom. So we're still going to see that. I feel in looking at um, just people who are trendsetters in our industry and just what's happening in general. I feel that we're headed kind of back to the 1920s. A little constant spry is with us. We are coming back to that look. Uh, and that appreciation for the product and the materials. So in that sense, no, but we are definitely morphing towards a little more um, refined look for sure. Yeah, Leanne. So teacher Leanne here, Yes. use your turntable and spin around and break the line of your container. <laughs> there you go. Oh, oh I, just, I have my underwear showing in the back. Exactly. Of there we go. <laughs> we'll, we'll fix that. Whoopsie. Whoops, they okay, now I'm done. happy. Okay. <laughs> Leanne, I'm not done. I'll, I'll make sure my phone is concealed before I'm done. <laughs> it was just a great on on the camera. Right so on the camera. Either that or make Ricky move the camera one or the other. <laughs> All right, there you go. So I've used that uh, that uh, leathery, um, very dried hydrangea just to cover my mechanics. If it shows, great. If it doesn't show, I'm okay with that too. It doesn't really matter to me. Um, I want to work with a few of these delicious, oh my goodness, dahlias. I don't know if they register, I'm salivating, if they registered their true color on camera, but in person they are absolutely electric. They almost glow, um, but these are wonderful. And these are local, correct, Liam? They are. I I think they might even be Barefoot Farm. Okay, so one of our graduates out of um, Klatsk and I, just over the hill here, um, she's a wonderful flower farmer and uh, just has some amazing, amazing product. So I'm going to take some of these stems down a little low because I want some visual weight down low in the design. But I'm also going to clean up my cup there and use this a little bit higher in the design. Take advantage of that stem height there. Maybe I've got one with a cool bit of curvature. Oh, these are just so pretty. That was our gorgeous, wow. They are really special. You had way too much fun at market. I did. <laughs> Not that I'm complaining, mind you, but uh, Leanne has been, um, she's been our flower buyer lately. She has been going in to market early, early, early in the mornings and sourcing all the fresh local product. I'm going to stick up too high. All the fresh local product for our students to work with so they get to enjoy the bounty of the end of the season as well. Oh, and as I tuck that in there, you know what I didn't grab out of the cooler in the end? What? Those cosmos that we talked ah, about. So let me go for Oh, it's fine. Because I'll give you one of that. You got it? I just, okay. That just made me think about it. It's like, oh, these are the same colors for cosmos I don't have. Okay, that works. So I'm tucking those little those little buds in on the 
on the side. So it gives the illusion that they might be connected, but they aren't really, really connected. And then I'll bring a little bit, oh, one more, off to the opposite side. Get a little bit of height up there and bring it over to the side a little bit. Ricky, what's going on in your world? Um, over on YouTube from Center Petals, they have a question, how do you stay up to date with flower trends and forecasting them? Great question. How to stay up to date with your flower trends. You have an incredible resource in your wholesaler for starters. They are going to be aware of what the growers are doing, what the growers have available and are planning on for future seasons. Um, for example, I know our flower friend Linda from Barefoot who grew these dahlias, she has just been unloading crate after crate after crate after crate of dahlias for next year. So she's getting ready to get those tubers in the ground and um, your wholesaler is going to have a good relationship with those growers who will be able to say hey we you know we are planting x thousand more bulbs of this or stems of that for the next year um i tell students as they're trying to do some forecasting for popular colors take a look at the textile industry take a look at um, the furniture world because in order to bring that expensive sofa to market, a year or two ago, they had to come up with the plan, the design of the sofa. And probably the year before that, they were putting in place the manufacturing and creating of the fabric, designing the fabric, because that doesn't happen overnight. And in order to get enough of it, it takes a little bit of time. So they said three years ago, this is where we're heading. So it's a good place to start for your base colors that might carry through for three to five to maybe 10 years. And then I say, look at throw pillows or accessories because those are a little lower priced. So we feel a little more like we can play with those colors. So those are the places I might pull inspiration for trendy things, not necessarily um, a long-term uh, classic color palette, if you will. Leanne, how about you? Do you have a tip for, for working with color like that? You know, and I would echo what many of our tulips have been typing in here, turning to the fashion world, because people will buy a new scarf or a new shirt in some trendy color mm -hmm. or trendy texture before, again, they would buy a couch or something. So the fashion world is an excellent place to look. And I always say, don't go to the inexpensive furniture stores, go to a, a higher end one where they're actually looking at, you know, spending multiple, multiple amounts of thousands of dollars in some cases on, uh, on a piece for the home that you're going to have for quite a period of time. And I thought there was one other question. Didn't somebody else have another, or did, was it, they were all lumped into one? I think lumped into one, but I do have some new picture, or new questions. Okay. Um, find them here again. Harvey wants to know what we do with the arrangements after a live stream. Oh, great question, Harvey. So, with the arrangements, um, after live, they go out into the uh, classroom area and then, or into the cooler overnight so that we keep them looking as fresh as possible. And then tomorrow, Ricky will take pictures of all of them so that we share them with all y'all, all y'all. We have, some, we have someone from Texas in class, and I now sound like I'm from Texas. Uh, so we can share the pictures with all of you in the tulip people. And then they typically go out into our um, office area in the front. So they are on the various teacher desks. Uh, sometimes we send them off to um, different places. Uh, when we have something for the Rose Festival, which if you're familiar with Portland, we do the 
Rose Festival Parade in June, sometimes they have a social event or a fundraiser or something, and we send them over for their office or uh, for that fundraiser. So they certainly don't go to waste. We definitely enjoy them here at school. Then uh, Jennifer wants to know the name of that rose, and Jackie wants to know if dahlias will do okay in foam. So the name of the rose is Tycoon, like a wealthy tycoon. And dahlias in foam are okay. They aren't great. They're drinkers. They really like their water, but they have been um, well conditioned. The grower, I know, personally, and I know that she follows the chain of life and good care and handling practices. She does everything she needs to do to them at the grower level, and then when we get them here at the classroom, we always make sure to do our part so that they last well. Right now, there's no additional water in the container beyond what the little bit I put, but I will, just to remind you, I will top it off when we're done. So I have these fun, like I said, the end had a lot of fun at market. Anybody know what these are? Starts with a P, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> they are pomegranates, and they are heavy Chevy, let me tell you. We didn't even try and put them in a vase because they kept knocking over, um, but they're on the stem, and I'm hopeful that they will stay on that stem as I add them into my design. I want them on their natural stem. They may not, they may just fall over and out of the design, and then I will cry, but you know, it's the nature of the beast. Amy, Jim, and Kathy were quick to come in with pomegranates, and then Renee was right there with it, so they know their fruits. Good. Well, all you smart tulip people, anybody have a thought? on perhaps the kind of design style I might be going with by incorporating uh, all these wild berries and the fruits and stuff. Um, it's it's a, an historical design style. If you've had advanced floral design with us here at school, you know we cover it in our heritage section as a very classic style, so I'm giving you a lot of clues here, people. So if you've been in our advanced class, you should absolutely get this right. Whoops, and there it goes. Run away. Well, he's got a little stem. Maybe I can just nestle him. Maybe I can nestle him back in here a little bit. A little, little depth and texture in there. I'm leaving the stick. I kind of I kind of dig the stick poking out there. Alright, so I also have some amazing so we had the coxcomb solution in the initial design, and now I have a different kind of celosia in the same crazy palette. Um, these are not dyed, by the way. This is Mother Nature's handiwork, and this is um, flame or feather celosia, and it has the same kind of furry texture that the other does, just doesn't look like a brain or a head of cauliflower. Anybody have a thought on design style, an historical design style I might be working in. Come on guys, don't let me down. Don't embarrass me in front of the boss. I know you know. We've got several on Facebook. Okay. Um, we have Flemish, Delarobia, Dutch Master, and Renaissance over here. Okay. So okay. tell me what do you have yeah, on we YouTube? We have Dutch Master, Renaissance, and Delarobia as well. All right, well, I definitely was feeling my Flemish. How's that? Uh, working with things that may or may not be in season together. In this case, they kind of are. Roses are in season all the time. But incorporating something extra, like the pomegranates, um, the hydrangeas are kind of at the end of their season. Uh, Leanne, you can weigh in on this one, but I tend to feel that if it's Delarobia, I'm only working in a wreath form or a garland form, and it tends to be more fruity, fruit or vegetable heavy, and perhaps not quite as floral heavy. I would have to agree with you there, and then the other thing with Flemish, you need some sort of critter or bug and a, and a bitten leaf 
to make it really be appropriate. Yes, and trust me, there are some bone holes. And we talked about that in class today, actually, in the end. Um, a couple of them were like, oh, my salal leaves have holes. And we had done a cabana earlier in the week, and I had shared with them um, that in some styles of ikebana, they feel that the leaf or the flower that perhaps has a, a bug hole in it, meaning something has nibbled on it, are the most perfect of leaves or flowers because that bug, that other living creature, has determined that it was so perfect that it would provide nourishment for the bug or the critter. So they view that as a good sign and it's not an imperfection, um, to quote Bob Ross, that's a happy little accident. So um, yeah, I, I'm sure if I look closely enough, something's gonna happen. Well, the, the um, pomegranates have a little bit of blemish to them. A little blemish in my Flemish. Sorry. I want to do a shout out to Heidi. She's been on Facebook and YouTube. She's kind of popping back and forth. Yeah. But she sent me a link to a Spanish tutorial the oh. other day where they were doing a shout out to Floral Design Institute. And I just want to say thank you, Heidi. It was so grand to see that. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, gosh, Leanne, we need to learn Spanish. Well, and I sent it to Susie, and she was like, oh, yeah, this is what she's saying. And oh, so good. Oh, boy. <laughs> Susie, I forget that you, you were smarter than the rest of us. <laughs> when Heidi had me, you know, if you go to, and I can't remember, like, 1 minute 54 seconds, you can hear her say, Floral Design Institute. Oh, awesome. It was so good. fun. So thank you, Heidi. That's great. Okay. Hello. Look at these. So more gorgeous dahlias. I just feel compelled to pop a few of them in here just because, because I can and because they're just delicious. So we'll work with them tucked in here. They really echo the color of the um, tycoon roses and also the coverings on the bittersweet, which gives it a lot of extra pow and I'm going to pop in here with the nippers because I want to keep the buds intact on the stem as well as the flower on his own stem. Kind of nestle him down low. Bring a little bit of color in there. So here's a question for you and sure. I don't know the answer. Maybe you do. All right. What season are figs available? They were looking for them last year for their Thanksgiving arrangement and couldn't find them. And I know I bought figs at our farmer's market in the summertime. Yeah. But I don't really know what is, you know, how long the season, the season is or is. something. I think I have purchased them more like August, September. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like they're mid to late summer into early fall. Um, gosh, my neighbor used to have a fig tree. And I should have paid more attention when he brought them over. So I would, it sounds like by Thanksgiving they would be would, gone. Would be gone. Yeah, that's kind of my feeling there. Um, figs are phenomenal, uh, both in design and in you know to eat. You know, well, Michael to Smith eat. says they come on his tree July fourth, but that okay. would be Florida, Florida. so yeah. that would be earlier probably. Yeah. So for us, a little later maybe would be about right that midsummer midsummer time harmony says hers were august and september okay all right well we're kind of in the same ballpark then i guess so no thanksgiving so sorry you're gonna not have to do figs for thanksgiving <laughs> have to come up with some other fabulous flower to work with there I assume you meant to design with them, or did you mean to eat with them? I think them? it was for design. Yeah, I, I guess I shouldn't. I mean, we could be the floral and cooking program. <laughs> <laughs> we could, yeah. Well, uh, we've been known to be working with apples and take a big old bite out of them. Yeah, Ricky. Um, so over on YouTube, it looks like we're having a little bit of debate in the comments as to what your color palette is. Pretty. <laughs> <laughs> All right, graduates, those of you who have gone through the program, what is the color palette or the color harmony? I'm fussing with this dahlia. It's just giving me stress six ways from Sunday. 
I'm done with you. All right, moving on from him. Anybody have a thought as to that color palette? You know, it's funny because the Celosia was in that color palette, which once I found that, mm -hmm. that signified everything I went to buy. And so I set you up for that question. <laughs> Sorry, maybe. Thanks, Leah. I'm not really bad. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> but it's, it's the Celosia flower palette. <laughs> the Celosia flower palette. Well, let's just grab that little color wheel over here somewhere. Get a little one handy. Ooh, you can tell now. I'm just going to keep poking posies while y'all think. Come on, students, you know this. Yeah. Oh, my goodness, these gumfrina are so. You have just found gumfrina in every color it grows in this season, I think, Liam. I think so. It's just been so fun. The students have thoroughly enjoyed working with it in the classroom. Um, I know I have. Takashi or Takishi, I'm not sure how I'm saying that correctly. Takashi says uh -huh. that his fig tree is fruiting right now. Oh. And then Rosie said if you don't have figs, use grapes. Oh, that would be a good trade-off. Similar similar growth, I think, in a cluster. Might give you and some coloration. Stuff. And color the yep. same. Yep. So has anybody popped in with an answer or the answer on what My Facebook people have it, and they have it correct. Okay, how about YouTube? Anything over there? I um, think this might be right on YouTube, too. All right, what do you have on YouTube? Well, I'm going to say Facebook, because I think they came in first, because okay. I've got them both up here. All right. <laughs> and Facebook came in with analogous, and I think it's a winner, winner, chicken dinner. Oh, uh, well, we have triads, so. Hmm. Okay, so analogous for sure, except I've got the hydrangea, which is in that blue-green, so we could just throw it under the bus and say it's foliage, um, which is where I was headed was analogous, but when they said triad, we do have, um, well, we have red violet to yellow orange, to blue green, so you know, yeah, it could be. It could go anyway. I know you're stretching me now. <laughs> yeah, if you could put that as the answer on the quiz, I would have to think for a minute. And keep in mind too that how it reads color-wise on your screen is possibly a little different than the reality. However, um, I I could I could kind of go and try to add my work here. Yeah, I'm like no 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 no. It's like well yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> If you, if you can present a valid argument for it, we will accept the answer. Trick question. Trick question, yes. So I'm going to tuck a few more of these in here just because it kind of bugs me. He's a little too straight. It is funny how Facebook and YouTube totally separated. I wonder if because a lot of YouTube people watch it on TV and the color may be truer on TV mm -hmm. than it is on the telephone? That's entirely possible. I don't yeah. know. Okay, so YouTube people, this is a question for you. Are you on your, what device are you using? I want to know if you're on a TV, a phone, or a computer, or a tablet. And Facebook too, just that's kind of a fun question. What device are you watching? Because that may affect our color. So from now on, we have to do just all white. <laughs> that's, your, that's your favorite. <laughs> Be careful what you ask for, Leanne. <laughs> <laughs> you know me. You'll say, oh, Michelle, could you pick up flowers? Mm -hmm. And I'll come in with all white, and then she'll wish she hadn't said that. <laughs> all right, so I've got those gonfrina tucked in there. And said so to me was such a dear, and to grab those cosmos. I think we'll tuck a few in as well, just because they echo that they echo the combination of the fuchsia, dahlia, and the kind of yellowy, um, golden, orange roses and other dahlias, and they echo the form as well. It just adds, just adds a little softness and lightness to it, and that, and they're just dang cute. So, there you have it. That's my justification. 
Wow, the devices are all over the place mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. oh, pretty really? fascinating. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, Anne Marie says the hydrangeas pop on her TV. Okay, interesting. Well, most people um, on YouTube, they're watching on the phone. Okay. When I love Rosie, she's watching on YouTube, but she's typing on Facebook. Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think there are a few people that do that because they know they can comment more easily. Uh, well, maybe not comment more easily. No, no. Trisha's doing the same thing. That cracks me up. How funny. Well, I'm learning a lot about our tulips. So, guys, keep typing in there. What you, how do you watch us? I want to know devices and how many different channels you're on. That's too what? funny. What's the server, the browser that you're working with? We'd like to know about your PIN. We'd like to know <laughs> inquiring minds. Oh, exactly. Inquiring minds want to know. We want to know what's going on. All right, so I'm going to tuck a couple more of these in here. I'm going to let my inner crazy out. Not a lot of it, just a little bit. I can hear Teacher Carolyn in my head. Extend, Michelle. Extension. Reach with the stones. And I know the minute we're done, she's going to come in and go, where's the extension? <laughs> it's extended for me. You could have done it better. It's poking out. We know you're the queen of that, but that's okay. I'm not catching the phone here. I can feel that. Carl always does two devices, one to watch and one to comment. Carl, I'm not that talented with my technology. I probably mess something up, I'm afraid. And Jim is watching the TV and then also then Facebook on his phone. So uh -oh. yeah, there's multiple devices. Uh, Marjorie's multiple devices. Interesting. I love this. So guys, thank you. Guys, gals, tulips. people, tulips, I guess, all of you and all of they. Um, if you could just keep telling us, this is excellent information just because I'm so curious. And for the Southerners, all y'all, all y'all, all y'all, I'm going to tuck just a few of these gonfrena down in short um, because I want a little bit of this juicy raspberry fuchsia down low. Well, and you know, Harvey, you asked what happens to the arrangements. I'm thinking this one's going home with me. <laughs> <laughs> thinking and doing are different, man. <laughs> Don't go for me on this one. <laughs> Although you are the boss, so I guess you They are it. loving it. All right, so I'm just tucking a few of these raspberry gomfrina down in here. Um, and for those of you who haven't played with gomfrina at all in your designing, they are a great floral value. And I say that because when, when you get them fresh, like we have them here, they are fabulous and beautiful and lovely. But they dry. They dry beautifully, almost as well, if not as well, as Craspedia. They have foliage, so the foliage doesn't do so hot. But the, um, the little blossom just kind of dries in place, and you get this wonderful, wonderful um, texture and color. They are fantastic in personals, in wearable flowers because you man this color is really hard to come by in things except for orchids which are fine i have nothing against orchids i just like the option for a little different texture a little different material little dude we'll tuck him in the back waste not want not right people all right i feel like i'm done and thank you all for the color palette discussion as to which color we're working with or multiple colors. Um, so I want to have a vote. What's your favorite? Fabulous and fuchsia or Ooh, fabulous and fuchsia <laughs> or orange you pretty. Oh, <laughs> sorry, couldn't help it with the puns. It's been one of those days. So, type orange 
or fuchsia, or you could say hot pink, because spelling fuchsia can be a challenge. I know, I have to think about it too hard when I go to do it. One last thing while you're typing. I know some of you have been calling and emailing and asking, when are you gonna publish the class schedule for next year? Well, we are finishing up the last pro cycle for this year. They're in their last week of basic, next week is the last advanced class. So if, perchance, you wanted to join us this year, that is your last opportunity. However, the first quarter classes are online, so you can look on the website and see what's available. And we've had so much going on, I can't, I can't even begin to tell you how much is going on. But by the end of November, we should have all of next year's classes posted. So in answer to your question, now for first quarter, very soon for the rest of next year, which will be just in time for your Christmas shopping. What would be better than a gift certificate to a class at Floral Design Institute to magically appear in your stocking? Hmm? Tell your secret Santa, okay? So, orange or fuchsia or hot pink. Let me know what your favorite is. And I want to say thank you for joining us today. Hope you had as much fun as I did. If you enjoyed it, like it, give us a thumbs up, share us, tag a friend who should watch it. If you're on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe. That way you get a notification every single time we post something or go live. Thank you to the team in the studio today. And now go, 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 and go do something you love. We'll see you next week.